My name is Mark Perry. Six years ago, I was saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I walked out of homosexuality. Two years ago, I was married, and six months later, I had to tell my wife I had AIDS. They did the biopsy, and I went into the doctor's, to the hematologist's um, office, and he, we were sitting there, and he says, Mark, you have six months to live. Sure enough, one day, he, he'd come into my office. He'd, the hospital that he had gone to for treatment uh, was about three miles away. And he walked here that day because the doctor told him that they'd come to the conclusion that he had AIDS. My father just reassured me of the fact that um, he knew that the Lord had brought Mark and I together. Mark Perry is just one of nearly 30,000 AIDS cases in the United States today. He used to be part of the most famous gay community in the world here in San Francisco, California. In those days, Mark was searching for answers, just like many in the gay community confronted by AIDS are doing today. And the answers he found are not that unique in themselves. We hear stories every day of people whose lives have been changed by an encounter with God. But by the choice he's made, Mark Perry puts himself in the middle of two communities at war with each other, the gay community and the Christian, and challenges both to take a good hard look at him and at themselves. I was as much a part of the community as anyone could ever be. I managed a store uh, on Castro Street. I was doing all the things that all the rest of them are doing. It's a lie, it's a total deception that um, they were not created as a homosexual, um, and you cannot go by your feelings. Mark says the biggest reality in his life is not that he has AIDS, but how and why he came out of homosexuality. I realized that all it was was one more, one more orgasm, and it was not satisfying. Toward the end of my time with, um, in the lifestyle, it began to spiral where I needed more. I kept wanting more. I, I wasn't getting whatever it was I was searching for. And it was really love is what I was looking for. How many partners do you think <laughs> you... Gosh. <sighs> many, many partners. I would say, um, I don't know, 200, 250. There was the leather scene um, and the real cruise bars where it's just hardcore cruising. There's very little said. You walk in and you pick somebody up and you go home with them. I just got really fed up one night and I said, there's got to be more to this than just this event and this continuous cycle of people in my life. I started reading the Bible and as I read more, I, I wanted to read more. And it began to separate me from my old friends. But because of immoralities, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. I found out my identity. I found out who I was as a man, the way I was meant to be a man. Just understanding that and where my place is, who I am as a man, I did discover that. You know, um, it's hard to put in words. <laughs> I think the thing that was the clincher that really um, started, that brought us together in developing a more serious relationship was when he got appendicitis <laughs> and ended up in the hospital. So I stopped and visited him every day at the hospital. One of the greatest joys of my life was when he and Shireen came to me and said that they wanted to get married. Mark's pastor, Michael Ryan of First Covenant Church, says that while Mark's story challenges the assumptions of the gay community, it raises even more serious issues with the church. If I have a righteous indignation, it is with the attitude of a lot of men in ministry across our country. I run into pastors, particularly outside of San Francisco, who have absolutely no use for the gay community. Now, that kind of an attitude obviously doesn't honor the Lord, because the Lord loves and died for every member of the gay community. And uh, we, have to, we have to love the sinner while wanting to deal with a sin. You see, if we would just be honest with ourselves and stand up and look in the mirror and see the sins that we have in our own lives that the Lord has been merciful enough to forgive, we have no business saying that God can't forgive or doesn't want to forgive 
members of the gay community. What do you think the effect of this crisis is going to be on the church? Well, a lot of their sons and daughters are going to come down with AIDS. Yeah, it's frightening to think. Um, as this, this is truly an epidemic, the AIDS, and we're just on the, the crest. We're just on the horizon of seeing a real, a real epidemic. And there will be very many needy, needy people. To me, the church should be preparing now for those needs. And um, that is not happening. Will the Lord reject forever? And will he never be favorable again? Has his loving kindness ceased forever? Why me, Lord? You know, what is going on? You know, you delivered me from this other thing. And with anger, tremendous anger, um, a sense of feeling cheated um, for the beautiful relationship that he's given to me. And now it looks cut short. And uh, it just, it's a very hard thing even now to, to, uh, to deal with. Shereen's my best friend, and I love her dearly. Even though he will be gone, the hope of seeing him again is encouraging. Um, I will miss him a lot. Um, see, he's my best friend, um, companion that I've, I've had who shares a lot of things in common. Um, we've had some wonderful times together, and I know that I would really miss him. I also have the hope that at any point in time, the Lord in His mercy could step in and do some healing. If it's His plan to wholly and completely heal me, I accept it. But the franticness is gone any longer. If it's His will for me to, to um, die tomorrow, I'm ready for that. And I welcome it. Paul was saying to live is Christ and to die is gain, and I, you know, I feel that in my heart. We are hopeful every day that we have breath. Uh, we don't want them to die. We don't lose them. We don't want to let go. But uh, you know, it doesn't look good right now. Praises, we sing praises to our God, for he's our mighty hope and our life. This last Tuesday, um, I don't know how many people here, um, who we've talked to and who we haven't, but uh, I went in to see my doctor, and uh, the KS lesions are now in my throat, and um, they're affecting my throat, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's, that is our next, that's the next challenge that has come about. And uh, I really enjoy um, singing. That's one of the things I do enjoy um, very much still. And um, I'm concerned about it. But, uh, we'll just hang in there and see what's going on. We lift up our hands, O oh Lord, to you. We lift up our hearts, O oh Lord, to you. We shout hallelujah. Six years ago, I gave my life to Jesus and was um, delivered from the homosexual lifestyle. Uh, three years later, the Lord brought this wonderful lady in my life and we were married. And a year and a half ago, uh, I was told that I had six months to live with AIDS. And uh, we have been through a, a real trial. <clears throat> And we're just here to thank you, each and every one of you. The victory is, yes, um, he can change my heart. Homosexuality can be forgiven as well as any other sin issue. 
It is not an unforgivable sin. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. Then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? 